Nihel Vora writes, The Lydian chromatic concept is redundant as musicians already knew how to improvise and reinvent the melody way before George Russell. Barry Harris has put in a lot of effort in making sense out of what was happening in the late 1930s and was able to connect it all the way to the classical age. I really appreciate your in-depth analysis of Charlie Parker's music, but I don't understand why you spend so much time on the Lydian chromatic concept, as all Russell has done is use the same modes in a different order and call it something else. Ooch! Okay, the first thing I want to say about this comment is to answer this question, why am I spending so much time on the Lydia chromatic concept? Well, first of all, the Lydia chromatic concept was developed in the bebop era in the 1940s, which this YouTube channel is dedicated to. So it's obvious I'm going to talk about something that was invented in the 1940s. Secondly, no one else on YouTube is really seriously engaging with Russell's ideas. And as a result, most theorists and musicians are not familiar with the first incarnation of chord scale theory. Because the original presentation of chord scale theory is tied up with that of Lydian tonal organisation, understanding the former, that is the Lydian tonic and all that stuff, is important to make sense of the latter, chord scale theory. Thirdly, George Russell was an important musician of the 1940s-50s as an arranger and composer, and for that reason we should take his conception of harmony seriously. Chord scale theory is an integral part of the way jazz is taught, and therefore many practicing musicians understand harmony in terms of the theory. Fourth, I think it's quite interesting, myself, personally. What I want to say as, as well is, he says Barry Harris put a lot of effort in making sense out of what was happening in the late 30s and was able to connect it all the way to the classical age. Uh, but he couldn't, he didn't use chord scale theory before George Russell because George Russell was the first person he invented chord, chord scale theory. Now, a lot of people don't like it and trying to make out as though he, you know, it was invented before, but it wasn't. He was the first one. So when you talk about bebop scales in relation to chords, you've really got to put George Russell down as the first person to do all that, you know, to actually inspire all that kind of thinking. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, we, I'm going to just keep in mind what he said, because we're going to actually look at a little bit of bebop uh, in this one. But I want to look at this table. Uh, I don't know if, if, I put it on the Facebook page, I don't know if people have been having a look at it, just a minute. Okay, so I want to look at this chart today. This chart, uh, you'll see pictures of it on the internet and uh, I put it on my Facebook page. Uh, some people are having trouble with it, don't really understand what it's about. It just doesn't make sense to them. I think mainly, I, I don't understand what this means, nine-tone scale. That's not part of the Lydian chromatic concept, that nine-tone scale. And this 11-tone scale, I don't understand what that is either. This is just a chromatic scale at end, which says Lydian chromatic. Uh, so I don't understand that, but this is from an earlier edition of the Lydia Chromatic Concept. What it was is, there was like a little envelope at the back of the of the book when you bought it, and you you took these little foldy things out, you know, the table with all the chord scales, and this was another one. Uh, what it is is, it's a way of seeing any anything in the Lydian Chromatic uh, scale, right? Any interval, right? It, it, identifies any interval so what I'll do is I'll just show you if I can and you'll you'll get it then okay first thing I want to say about this chart is if you look at it the these are basically intervals and showing you where the intervals are if you look you get 12 all the intervals basically from 
if you're doing in Roman numerals from one to seven so it's all chromatic notes in every one of these columns can you see you've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve chromatic scale one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 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 and if you go all the way along you get twelve in every one of these columns now you can't actually do that with major scale because the major scale can't produce an augmented fourth from its tonic from its from its root like if you see major you can't produce the uh, augment, uh, augmented four four flat and fifth from from the C you know what I mean the the nearest one to create one is F which is the basically the genuine linen tonic so it is different this to the major scale in that respect right what these represent is, is intervals what notes rep, uh, represented on each interval now to show you how it works this what I'm going to do is I'm going to just blank this in right with white and then I can write the linear scale and I can show you go back and forth okay so what I'm going to do is that now okay so I've blank, blank this in I've just put a square in in Photoshop uh, and I, now I'm going to write in the uh, the Lydian scale and I'm going to write in the Roman numerals associated with each degree of the Lydian scale okay so I'll see you in one second okay so I've, I've written in a Lydian scale in F to make it easier for you and I've just put the Roman numerals for each degree of the scale okay so this is how this works uh, you've got the prime which would be F here and now a an F will go with itself won't it an F because if you play an F and you play another F in unison it plays with itself because that's what this means prime it just means a unison so every single of those notes can be played with unison so that's why they're all there you see I mean it's actually written down in perfect fifths that look you've got uh, F C G D A E B right so we can look to see what intervals can be formed on the one chord this F so let's have a look so I'm going to circle it can play a unison with itself which would be that unison you can play a second obviously if you look at that see F to G second you can play a third and sharpen fork it's Lydian five six and seven okay so those are the intervals that you can you can play from an F basically everything what's not a minor third minor fifth all that kind of stuff uh, and you can see the chord that you're going to be making from this as well if you take these remember these are just notes that are in in one so one to three to five to seven makes a major seven chord doesn't it I'll just write that down and so that makes F major seven doesn't it and then we can look at these as tensions so you've got this second which would be a ninth you've got this plus four which would be a sharpened eleventh and then you've got this one here this six which would be a thirteenth so you can actually make if I can write it down oops write it down there you can actually make an F major 13 a sharp 11 okay I think you'd put that in brackets wouldn't you like that so you can actually make that chord F major 7 13 which has no avoid notes all that stuff uh, so you can do the same with the others I'll just erase that and then we'll have a look at this one five chord just to give an idea of what's happening here okay so I'll just go through the chord five just to show you as another example you can do the rest yourself I mean once you once you know a couple you can do the rest so basically you can make the five chord which would be C into the note be C here it makes it makes the interval the fifth mode so it makes an interval of five the second obviously which would be a C D then we'd get an E wouldn't we five E and then with F so it'd be, it'd be fourth so that's telling you it's horizontal uh, and then we've got fifth and a six and a seventh okay so that's the mode right uh, the chord isn't 
Nihal says that the modes are just the, just the same as major from distant position. But the thing is, they're not they're not really modes as as in when you work in the major scale. The the Russell sees them as chord modes, and the chord that's associated with that is not the same as the major scale. I mean, major scale would that if that was major scale, would you see major seven? But it isn't with this. It's F. What he puts it down is F major the primary chord is f major uh, 13 sharp 11 with the fifth so c in the bass i mean it's just weird so it, it, russell doesn't actually see it as as a, what you you see it in the major scale you know what i mean now if you look at that i'm not going to do any more because i think i think you can work them out yourself can't you you know what i mean if you look at d you look you look what the, the things are d you can make a second you know d to e and all that and then you can see what the chords are what i want to do is just write it down uh, uh, i just want to go through these again and we'll look at the intervals right and we'll see how it relates to bebop because he was talking about uh Barry Harris and Barry Harris says, does that 6 dv which is bebop uh, 6 diminished scale which is basically bebop scales and you work different chords and all that from there but the Lydian chromatic concepts are actually different and you see things differently let me just erase that and I'll try and show you okay so I'm just gonna circle the one chord again Okay, so that's that's basically all those notes are there, aren't they? You know, what I mean, you've got F G, second F to A, third F to B sharp four. You know what I mean? Uh, now, if you had that scale, where do you think you would add the added note if you were turning it into a bebop scale? Have a think about it. Post a video if you want. Okay, if you had to think about it, I'll tell you where I'd put it. I'd put it there. A sharp five exactly the same as it would be in uh, you know an ordinary B up scale so let's just put it in let's just write it in here and it goes back to F so that's what the scale would look like does it work yeah of course it does I mean you're going down on that this is how they say you're coming up on the half beat on that you're going down that which is a chord tone you're coming up on this one you're going down on that the fifth coming up on that you're going down on the six so we're talking f6 aren't we uh, coming up on that and then we're going down so it's, it's basically very similar to as an ordinary bebop scale except for one thing see that note there in a, in a major bebop scale that would be b flat not b See, it's Lydian. It's a Lydian bebop scale. Now let's look at it in music form. Okay, so this is this is the chord F6. This is the B the bebop. This is the Lydian bebop major scale. It's very similar to the major bebop scale, except it's got this B in, right, instead of a B flat. Now, if you look at it, it's it's kind of changing the music a little bit, isn't it? It's like forcing it. If you look at it. If you're playing in the major bebop scale, right, what you're doing is you're getting F, you're getting this A, and then you're getting C, but you're getting B flat going to C. Here you're getting B going to C. So what this B's doing is pushing this C. It's actually pushing it more. Then you've got this C sharp pushing into D, right, which is a 6. Do you know what I mean? And then this E to F. So you're getting, you're getting a lot more pushing in that note. So that see, just see what it sounds like. Uh, but it works descending as well, can you see? D let's get that out of the way a minute, it looks a bit irritating. So you're going if you go in D down, you're going F D you're going F E D C six, that would be on beat actually if you're descending, wouldn't you? So all notes would be so it works up and down exactly the same. But like I say, going up you've got that half step down. Uh, going down you've got uh, you haven't got the B flat see the B flat to A will be stronger going down. This seems to be stronger going up, and the B flat to A is pushing going down into it. So, but it's a different sound. It's not the same. He's making out as though uh, that Nihal. He's making out as though 
uh, Lydian scales and modes and all that. They, everything's generated the same as a major. It's not. That is different. That B bot scale is different because it's got that B, nat uh, B natural instead of B flat. I think the D the D scale and the the minor scale uh, with a sharp seven is exactly the same, and so is the uh, the seventh scale. They are both the same. Let's have a look at them. Okay, so uh, let's just have a look at the seventh chord. See uh, see how that works. So the seventh chord is chord two in it, which would be G G B D F. So I'll just circle that in. Right, so where would you put the two? The two. Well, if you're looking at that, which would be you know, G in it, so it's G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The other note I would put there on that one. F sharp. Right, that would be exactly the same as Barry Harris's sixty mini scale. But the Lydian chromatic concept can add notes. You can add augmenter scale. Remember the Lydian uh, augmenter scale is F, G, A, B, C sharp, D, E. So we could actually add a C sharp to that, which would change the scale. So you've got a B, a B bot scale based on the Lydian augment, uh, augmented. So let's look at that. As you can see, it looks different, doesn't it? It's got a sharp 11 now in... Let's have a look at that. And on a raising, you've got this same effect with this C sharp pushing into this D. So you've got a push push note here and a push note here, push note and E to F, you know, and the push note from the pushing note from that F to G. So it's it's better really that ascending, the normal uh, G seven chord, which would have a a normal C there. C would drop to to B as you're descending, and that would uh, that would be better because you've got a chromatic drop down to B. So they they work differently going up and down, don't they? So uh, so it's it's interesting to look at that. Look that di the scales are different, and you can actually alter them as well. These, like I said, I've just altered that. I don't want to go into this too much. Uh, if you go into something like uh, oh the minor, I think's very similar. Okay, so this is the Lydian six chord or the two chord in ma in a major key. Uh, in B bot scales, uh, Barry Harris would put an F sharp as the added note because he says it's the same scale as the as the dominant B bot scale. But my observation, of Charlie Parker, is that he likes to play it like this. We we have a sharp seven going to the the root of the chord, so it would be D E F G A B C C sharp D. Now in this little example I've showed here, that note of coloured blue, that is, uh, this scale now is from F Lydian diminished, which has a flat third, so if you've got F Lydian, F G A flat, you see, so I put the A flat in, which is replacing the A, so this chord has now changed from D minus 7 to D minus 7 flat 5, or a D minus 7 half diminished if you're American. Uh, if you look at it, it's working. Let's G. It's actually working very good going up because you've got D E F G to A flat is half step, so you're pushing into that flat five, right? But remember, you're playing a flat five. You might not want to play that, but the bebopers did used to do that, play flat fives on things, uh, and that's what it looks like going down. But you've just got to play around with these things and see what they sound like and if they sound okay. 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 I just want to show you this. Uh, Lydian, aug Lydian augmenter scale. I just want to talk about it a bit because if I talk about it and just go through it, then you can see what I'm what I'm seeing, and then you can look at the other scales yourself your own way. But I'll just go through this because what, what I'm going to do is look at it from the fifth mode because really you should be looking at all these from different modes as well and see what, what's happening. And we'll look at it from this fifth mode, which is a plus five, and that's not like the major scale. Is having a plus five mode? Because your major scale, you just have a fifth mode, don't you? You know, so it's it is different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to circle all those plus fives, and then I'm going to write the scale down of uh, a leading augmented from plus five. Okay, so I'll write it down here. So I'll just see you in a second. Okay, so I've I've just circled all the plus fives there. This is this what the scale looks like, right? From uh, the, the sharp five, 
Uh, if you try to play that, let me just write the code. Russell says that the code for that on plus five is C sharp. This is the primary code. Augmented seven, right? Flat nine. That's what Russell says that the code is. Now, I'm just going to write down the notes for that. Now, the root of that code is obviously the C sharp. Uh, the third would be the F, wouldn't it? So it would be E sharp, you know, some, a, a third would be E sharp, but it's F there. Uh, the seventh would be the A, wouldn't it? Not the seventh, the fifth, sorry, would be the A. Uh, is that right? Yeah, because it's augmented. Augmented fifth is A, because C sharp, the fifth would be G sharp. That's augmented, so it's A. And the seventh would be B. Okay. So it's a bit strange that. If you were right, playing that as a scale to match that chord, you're playing down. If you look at this, you're playing down on... Remember in eighth notes, you're playing down on that C sharp, you're coming up on the D, and you're coming down on the E, which you don't want, you want to be going down on the F. So you're coming up on the F, you're going down on that G, which is not a chord tone either, and then you're coming up on the A, the A, sorry, and then you're going down on the B. So you've got the only chord tones you're playing is that and that, them two. You're missing the F and the A. So it's not very good, is it? So uh, so I've actually... I'll just show you. So you, you'd come across that and you're thinking, you know, it's a bit difficult to play scales and you can't really make bebop scales down it because, look, you've got all these half steps. Can you see these half steps? You'd have to put... You just I don't know. You just couldn't be able to... You won't be able to do it. You can't put an half step in here. You, you're still not playing... Because you're still not playing uh, on... On a chord tone, which is C sharp to F, you, you know what I mean? If you put a thing in there, you're just going to be paying notes that are not not chord tones anyway. So this is my solution to it, to that scale. Okay. Okay, so this is my solution to, to this crazy chord and the fact that you can't really make the scale work. you just got to play the scale a different way and, and think of it a different way. It works now. Look, you've got the C sharp, which is the root, right? Uh, the F was the third there, look. You've got the A, which is the fifth. You've got the F, which is the the third. And then you've got the root again. So you're playing root, fifth, and third. Uh, root, fifth, and third. And that's the seventh, which is off the beat. But you can't help it. So it plays like that. And playing up, it also plays the same. So it does work, but you've just got to change the rhythm. So if you're actually playing on this chord and you're playing a scale down like that, you're playing descending scale, that's how you've got to play it. Now, I'd, I'd, I had a look at this, uh, and if you look at it, all the notes are basically in F Lydian, apart from that C sharp. So this chord really would like to go to F Lydian and to resolve with that C. So I've just wrote out, if you look at this, I've just wrote out, I've just wrote out a little, little kind of tune. I'll just play it for you, a little melody. Not brilliant. But you can hear the difference between that C sharp and C, how it's descending down. Now, this is definitely Lydian, this, really, because you've got this C sharp augment to 7 flat 9. Uh, and you wouldn't really get that if you were playing in in a major key, you won't be thinking something like that. You, you, if you were harmonising it, it'd be harmonised different, real, and you'd get different sounds. Uh, you could harmonise it, I suppose. Let me think. Okay, so I've I've written this little tune out that I've written this little three-bar thing, uh, which was which I wrote in F Lydian is now in F major, and the difference obviously between F Lydian and F major is that there's a B flat in there. Which means that this chord here, which has got this B in, is not actually in F major. So that chord, right, is different. If you look at this, it's B to F, 
Right, is the tritone. Now, trit that tritone would belong to G7, wouldn't it? Right, apart from this chord, it belongs to G7 in in C major. And the tritone substitute to what we get this C sharp in C, in C major would be D flat, right? So this this chord would be D flat seven, right? So then that would bring that in as a B, but it's not now in in F in F major because it's got a normal B. So this chord, which would be in a major key, would be D flat seven, right? Would be would actually be sub 5 7 of 5 and that's the fifth chord so this chord now it's running d flat uh, 7 but to c7 right it's running in in the uh, dominance right so it, it, because because i need this dominant to get to that f c7 goes to f doesn't it so this is sub 5 7 of 5 right and this is the fifth chord of uh, F6, right? So we're actually, we are in the key of F major, which has got V flat, but I'm using a sub substitute dominant chord, which is non-diatonic. I've told you it's substitute dominant chords are non-diatonic to get there. But it's going to sound different. It's not, that's, I don't know, let's have a listen to it and see what it sounds like. I've actually written some chords underneath. Uh, so we'll just have a listen to it. There's one other thing I've just, as I played, I heard it straight away. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see it when I was just explaining it to you. But because we're actually in D flat seven now, right, which is a substitute dominant chord, uh, we've got to put these A flats in because these A flats are part. So I've actually changed the melody. Now, as soon as I heard that, I thought that's not the melody I wanted. I wanted A's there, and I just wanted this subtle change from that C sharp to C. Now, looking at that, you can't get it in the major, thinking major, you can't get it. But with Lydian, it's just giving you the answer. Just listen to that again. Listen to those A flats, which are ruining the sound. So you've got A flat and A, but I don't want that. I want the C sharp just going to the C. I want that lovely, subtle sound it had before. So let's go back to my... Uh, my little tune and actually harmonize it in Lydian, okay? Okay, so I've, I've harmonized it now with Lydian. So this is C sharp, seven flat nine, the, the roots on the top, uh, and I've, this is the chord built up. So we're actually in an inversion, and it's dropping, it's a very simple, smooth line to this F6. Uh, again, we've got the C sharp, so it's just we're all in key in F Lydian, we've just got this nice subtle change from that C sharp to C and then what I've done here, I've just put this chord in first inversion here just to finish it off right but it's the chord hasn't changed so let's have a look see what it sounds like in Lydian or well, remember we've got A's here now as well that's the sound I was looking for all those every every note is in F Lydian and then we've just got that C descending to that it's such a subtle change from that c sharp to that c it's just so much nicer well the thing is it, this is what i wanted this sound when i've just written, written this little tune that's the sound i wanted see it's a very subtle sound and you haven't got that cadence that perfect cadence pushing it i don't want it to be like that. i want it to be a nice just a nice drop down, half step drop down to there. Uh, and the, uh, if you look at the actual chord that it's playing, it's just the roots just changing. So it's a very, very subtle harmonic change, you know what I mean, which I actually wanted. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, I preferred the other other way of doing it with the, with the uh, substitute uh, 5, 7 of 5 going to far, uh, 5, 7 going to 1. You, see, it's all personal taste, isn't it? But the thing is, that had them A flats in, which I didn't want. <laughs> I want it to be natural like this. So, you know, so when Nihal is saying that 
the Lydian, the Lydian chromatic concept, all that is redundant and it don't mean it. The thing is, you can't actually see this in major. It, it's a Lydian chromatic concept thing, which gives you a, a different way of playing things. So I, I disagree with what he's saying. You know what I mean? It does. It does give you new sounds, but you've got to play about with it. Lots, the trouble is, lots, most people don't want to. Just don't want to play about with it and, and see these things, you know. But I think it gives you a different perspective on music. Uh, I just want to show you one other thing uh, before I finish this video off. All right. Okay, so this is uh, a page out of Mark Levine's book, The Jazz Piano. It's on page 19, and it's the tune Just Friends. It shows you the tune Just Friends, and then he harmonised it. I'll just show you the first eight bars of his harmonisation in Sibelius. Okay, so this is what it looks like in Mark Levine's book, basically. I've just copied it straight into Sibelius. Uh, I'll just play it and let you listen to it. Okay, now, if you look at that tune, you've got the, the melody written on the top line. See, it's all it's all top line here, isn't it? So you know what the melody line is, i.e. what notes are going to be played. It's not like an improvisation where you don't actually know what's being played, which means that you can actually stack harmonisations underneath this melody line, and then as long as you're not creating any clashes, unnecessary clashes, you can you can actually stack stack the music up. You know, Al Galpi says you can't, but you, you actually can in this situation because you've got control over these melody notes. So let's do that. Okay, so this is a a stacked version of that tune. So you've got more notes underneath using Lydian chromatic concepts. This is Lydian flat seven. Uh, this is just a C major thirteen. Uh, this is a C minor 13, so this part at 6 chord. This is a f uh, flat nice, so this is uh, Lydian diminished. You've got a normal major diminished with sharp, ele uh, sharp 11. Again, we're going to 6 chord of a Lydian scale. Uh, this, is, uh, this is basically that chord I've just been showing you. I've had to write it down like this because the Sibelius won't let me put it in. It's the same chord, but I've just added the sharp 11 instead. So it's E flat seven. Oops. It's E flat seven with flat nine. Uh, oh, it's E flat augmented seven with flat nine and sharp eleven. Really, it has to be written like that in Sibelius because it won't let me write it as a Lydian chord. Uh, so that's basically a reharmonization. Let you you can look at that yourself. It's all that's all using Lydian chromatic concept to just reharmonize. That very simple, if I just show you again, to reharmonize this very simple harmony that Mark Levine puts in. So have a, have a listen. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll just play you Mark Levine's version. I'll play you this version and you'll see the difference. So this is Mark Levine's version. It's pretty simple. Sounds all right. Now this is a version with Lydian chromatic concept, just make sure it speeds the same. As you can see, it does sound different by adding the harmonisation. Now, if if you listen to people like Bud Powell in the 1950s, he did a, a version of uh, Cherokee, didn't he? And when he plays the tune on Cherokee, if you've heard it, it's a very complicated harmony, harmonisation. But then when he goes into his solos, he gets rid of all this dense stuff and just goes into simple, simpler backing so he can use his right hand to improvise without any clashes, do you know what I mean? So it depends on the situation you're in. This situation, I know that these top notes are 
or the melody, so I can harmonise the melodies. Do you know what I mean? I'm not imp I'm not interfering with any improvisation that anybody's doing. So if the if you finish the tune, harmonising the tune, as soon as you go into a situation where there's somebody playing a solo, you just make the chord simple again, like that Mark Mark Levin's original, like that, like Mark Levin originally did it, and you can just do simple harmonisation. You know what I mean on it? I don't know, but you've just got to think about what you're doing. So that's it. I hope I've given you room for thought. I'm down at my workshop and it's absolutely freezing. It's really gone cold for a, cha for a change. So uh, I'm just going to render this and get me a cup of tea or something to warm up. So uh, I'll see you in the next one. Okay?